I do? I don't know what I'm gonna be reading. You'll find out when I do. He feels kind of, well, like a wet noodle. I'm in burnout. star. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Monday. It is the final week of Ramathon. If you guys have no clue what I'm talking about, Ramathon is a month-long readathon hosted by Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy, and this year we are going to school, and I am the co-host of Team Shadows. Part of the bonus prompts for this readathon is to read books with a school setting, so we're going to be going hard reading books with school settings this week. The first one that I think I'm going to be picking up is Shards of Glass by Michelle Seguera. I don't know a whole lot about this book other than it is set in a school. Never read from this author before, but I have seen her books floating around, so I am very, very excited to pick this up. I will be listening to the audiobook on my way to work this morning, but speaking of work, I'm late. Very, very late, but I just wanted to come on, say hi, good morning, and it's gonna be a great week. Okay, so I drove the entire way to work this morning, listened to Shards of Glass by Michelle Segarra, and I was liking it okay, I guess, but not just like loving it. The writing style was a little weird to me. It reminded me of Sean McGuire's Wayward Children series combined with the book that went burned by Mark Lawrence and kind of the setup and the writing style more of Shauna McGuire. But I was looking at some reviews because I was like, mm, I just want to know what people thought. Like, is the writing style a problem? Is it going to start to change? How is the setting going to work out? And realized that people said that you needed to read up to book 15 in her other series in order for the rest of this book to make sense. And I was like, hmm. Maybe I'll just put that down. <laughs> so this is a spinoff series. I did not realize that it was a spinoff series of her other series. And usually you can still read spinoff series even if you haven't read the other one, but apparently you can't. Like there were probably half the reviews that said do not read this unless you get to that book. So I'm going to stop with that one and I'm going to be listening to Magic Study on the Way Home instead. That's kind of a bummer because I was intrigued by it, but yeah, I, I, I need it to make sense. So I need to know what's going on. Well, I'm going to go get me some McDonald's for lunch. I'm very excited about it and I will chat with you guys later. So I feel like it has been a literal year since I talked to you guys, which is untrue because today is Tuesday, which means I literally opened the vlog yesterday. But I think the reason why is because I just really haven't been reading. I think I might have burnt myself out just a little bit during Peace Talks. But that's okay because I read some really, really good books during Peace Talks, but I'm definitely hoping to have a little bit of a slower week this week. I have kind of thrown my TBR that I was planning for this week out the window. I changed a couple things. I've added a couple things. I don't know what I'm going to be reading. You'll find out when I do because I'm just going to kind of pick up school setting books as they come. I am still going to do school setting books, but I'm not really going to be setting a dedicated TBR. I started like three books yesterday and put all of them down. The Shadow Glass I put down probably would have even without knowing that it, was, it wasn't a book that I could actually read. And then I started Blood Song by Anthony Ryan, put that down. I didn't really dislike it. I just wasn't interested. And then I started Magic Study and elected to listen to Taylor Swift on the way home instead of reading. So that's how my week is going so far. And it's only been a day, but that's okay. I did get a little bit of reading done today though. I listened to some more of Magic Study and I don't really have a lot to say about this one. It is fine. I am interested. I'm having a decent time with it, but I don't think this is going to be a series that I'm like, yes, four stars, five stars, loving it. It feels like a three star series that I'm interested in enough to continue, but not like completely loving, which is sad because I know this is a favorite of so many people's that I wanted to love it too. But right now I'm not feeling that. However, I am literally only... I'm 30% of the way in, so I am a decent chunk. I'm a lot further into it than I thought that I was, and we're just now getting to the school setting part, so I'm hoping now that we're in the school setting, it will start to pick up a little bit. Poison Study is following Yelena, who is just been put on trial for murder. So in this world of Ixia, in this land of Ixia, there is a very strict regime. Everyone has a uniform. You can't kill another human for any reason whatsoever, not even in self-defense. And magic is completely outlawed. And she has been accused of killing a man and is being sentenced to death. But the like right hand of the king offers her the position to be a poison taster for the king rather than being killed. 
But the caveat is he is going to give her a poison and he has the antidote that he has to give her once every single day or she will die. That's in order to keep her from running off while not keeping her in chains while she's trying to serve the king. And so that's just kind of the general setup for this series. It definitely goes a different direction further on as we go. This one does have a school setting. I'm not going to tell you how we got there, but it does have a school setting and we're just not getting there. So I'm hoping things start to pick up as we start to learn more about that. And then I also have gotten like 50 pages into an education in Malice, so I want to give you guys a quick update on this. First and foremost, S.T. Gibson can absolutely write a book. I think that her writing is just so easy to suck you in, and even if it's not a topic that you feel like you would be interested in, I was just completely sucked into the story. This one is following Laura, who is been sent to this school for girls and she is wanting to write poetry and she wants to get in this class of a professor that's supposed to be really really hard and actually teaches senior seminar for poetry and then we have carmilla who is also a senior at this school and she is the prize student of this professor and so there's a little bit of that caddy competition aspect to it mean girl aspect to it while also having an undertone of vampires. So, so far I am liking this. I don't have a lot more thoughts on it other than she definitely has a unique twist on these types of stories and things that make you just a little bit uncomfortable while also staying intrigued all at the same time. She does that so well and I don't know how she does it, but I'm gonna continue reading this one. I don't know if I'll read any more tonight. I just kind of wanted to get one chapter in and I actually managed to read 60 pages. So I'm pretty proud of myself for that. Okay, so I am home and I have a reading update for you guys. I spent all day at work today finishing up Magic Study and I liked this one better than book one. I think this one may get a low four star from me because I definitely felt like the plot was a lot more engaging. It felt like less of an intro book and a little bit more stable. Although I will say that these books tend to be very episodic so far. The first one was the poison study and in the castle. And then the second one is this murder mystery slash school setting plot thing. And I liked it. I felt like the plot did move a lot faster in this one. I liked spending time with just Yelena, but they do feel somewhat episodic and I don't really know how to explain that. I wish that the school setting had been a little bit more prominent than it was. It definitely kind of takes a back seat, but I liked the murder mystery. I liked learning more about the magic and learning a little bit more about how the politics work between these two kingdoms. Think that my biggest complaint with this series is that the side characters just do not feel very well developed to me. I feel like the characters themselves just need a little bit more depth to me, especially the side characters. I don't get the chemistry between Yelena and Varric, Valak, however you say his name, at all. That he feels kind of, well, like a wet noodle, to be honest. He's just not really got a lot of depth to him. And Yelena, I do think, has a decent amount of character development, but all of the other side characters, like her brother and her parents, they just, I feel like, are there to have an archetype and to help with the story in one way or another, but they don't feel like their own character. She definitely had more chemistry with one of the guys that was like teaching her how to ride a horse. I don't want to say any more than that because I feel like it could be spoilery, but I felt like in the beginning I felt more chemistry with him than I had really any other character. And even though the beginning was slow, like I said, I liked the story and the plot as it moved along and I am very interested in book three. I did enjoy it, but it's definitely not a book without its problems. I think that if I had read this 10 years ago, I would be absolutely in love with it. And this one definitely felt less YA than book one did, but I just am missing something from it. And I don't really know what that is because I wanna love it and I do really like it, but I'm missing something from it. So that was my audiobook. And this week, I think I'm gonna have an audiobook and a physical book going. Typically, I like to just have the same audiobook. I read it when I get home physically or tandem reading, and then I listen to it when I'm in the car. But because the Education in Malice has no audiobook that I can easily get my hands on, and I'm not gonna spend a credit on a book that is like eight hours long, I am listening to something while I'm reading that one at home. I really theoretically should be able to finish it pretty soon, but I am in a reading slump a little bit. And so just physically reading when I get home, especially reading when I get home, I just kind of want to watch TV and not read. So I don't know how quickly I will get that physical book done. So with that being said, I started another audiobook. And I really, really struggled with what I wanted to read. Asked my Patreons, I kept waffling back and forth. I'll be honest, I've started several books and just 
put them all down because I just haven't found what I'm in the mood to read right now. But I read The Bone Season, the original version, oh gosh, five, six years ago, however long ago um, The Mime Order came out was when I first started reading this series. And I remember vaguely there being like a training setting, pretty heavily like a learning training setting to this book. And that's good enough for Cassidy. So that's good enough for me, for this vlog especially. So I think that I'm going to stick with this one. I did listen to this on the way home. I got about to chapter five, which is about 50 pages in. So I actually made a pretty good dent in this. And the school setting I actually think is a little bit more relevant because this is actually set at a prison or town, prison town. Oxford, but it's named Oxford because it's actually the place where Oxford once stood. And so between that and the fact that this is a very heavy like training type setting for a lot of the book, at least best I remember, I could end up reneging on that best I remember. That is like a good setting part of this book. I think we're going to count it. And if I end up changing my mind, it's in the vlog and we just don't count it on the spreadsheet. I really, 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 really loved the fourth book in this series, but I remember the first one being a little bit of a struggle for me. I gave it a three star originally. This one has been heavily revised. I'm going to put it down because it's kind of heavy, but basically Samantha Shannon said that she had grown a lot as a writer. Brian, stop. She said she had gone, grown a lot as a writer and she felt like she could do better than she did the Bone Season originally because I think she, she was only 21 when she wrote the Bone Season. So she felt like as she's grown as a writer, she could do better. And so she heavily, heavily revised book one and then has subsequently been revising the sequels in order to match the minor changes and inconsistencies that may come later in the series. It doesn't sound like the latter books are revised as heavily because they are coming out a lot more a lot closer together. So I'm assuming that they are not quite as heavily revised as this first one is, but it's definitely longer. And I'm assuming there are some things added and changed. She said that there were. I'm not sure if I remember enough about the bone season to give you guys like a, yes, you absolutely need to read the revised version. But I will say that it sounded like in the intro, Samantha Shannon felt like you should read the revised version. So if you have access to it, maybe just go that route. So far, I definitely feel like there has been a lot added to the beginning of this book based off of what I remember, a lot more information. But the biggest problem that I had with the first book in the series, the biggest problem most people have is the info dumping. And I don't mind a good info dump and I'm already familiar with this world because I've read up to book four, but there is a lot of info dumping in here and it's just done in a very word vomit at you kind of way, which is fine. Like I don't particularly hate that, but I do wish that it was a little bit more blended into the story just to make it feel more ingrained rather than Paige going, oh, the reader doesn't know what any of this is, so let me just word vomit everything so that you understand. However, with that being said, you get most of the information that you need up front and then can kind of continue on into the story. So I'm liking it. It's easy to get sucked back into this world. It is a dystopian sci-fi world with fantasy elements, so this is definitely a sci fantasy story. I forgot how dystopian in sci science fiction it was until I restarted it, but I'm having a really good time with it so far. It's, like I said, easy to sink back into, and I'm excited to read read it. I think that those are all of my updates for now. I've been talking for way, way, way too long, but I will check in with you guys. Hopefully I will have read a little bit more of An Education in Malice tonight. If not, I will touch base with you tomorrow. Okay, so quick update for you guys because I am currently in my office filming, but I made it about halfway through the bone season today and I'm still really enjoying this one. I don't know that I'm going to love it just astronomically more than I did originally. I feel like on reread it's definitely easier for me to understand things and kind of sink back into that world and have context of things that are going to happen later on. But I don't know that I would say at this moment the revised version feels drastically different from what I remember of the original version. Take into consideration that the original version has been a while, like a long while, 2019 a while since I read it. So I don't know that I'm the best person to ask, but right now it feels very on par with what I remember from book one. Like I said, still having a good time. It'll either be a high three star or low four star. Right now, I think it's going to move up from a three star to a four star because having context, I am enjoying it a little bit more. And I don't know if that's the revised version or just knowing what I know about the series. And then I think I'm going to give education and malice like 50 more pages and then I think I may DNF it. This is one of those books where I feel like I started it and everything was going okay and then I waited a day or two and picked it back up 
and I just wasn't feeling it. I was really bored reading it last night. I was just not having a good time. And your girl, I'm in burnout. I am so tired this week. I just don't really want to read. And so in order to try to make myself read, I need to be picking up books that I'm looking forward to. And unfortunately, Education of Malice is just not doing it for me. I think it's one of those books that's really doing everything that it set out to do. It's just really slow and not keeping my attention super well. And then I also think that it's a one sitting kind of book. It's a binge it straight through kind of book. And if you stop and try to pick it back up again, I think it really just kind of loses its momentum and intrigue. At least that's the way that I feel. And I just don't know that it's ever going to get enough momentum and get enough intrigue again for me to really want to for me to really love it. Right now, I think the best it's going to get is a three star, which is fine. It's setting out to, it's doing everything it's set out to do. It's got atmosphere, it's sapphic, it's got problem and troublesome themes, but handling them in a really good way. It's very vampire adjacent. I, that's not the main point of the story. I just feel like it doesn't have quite the intrigue and the plot that A Dowry of Blood did, which made me enjoy it a lot more. The character work is just not really as strong. These characters feel like massive archetypes that just don't really have a lot of depth to them. They just are what they are. And I wish that I was seeing them grow or just have more depth, period. But right now they just don't for me. So I think I'm talking myself into DNFing it as I'm talking to you guys because I just... I don't know. I'm not feeling it. That's all that I have for you guys right now. I know that I'm not really checking in a whole lot, but it's because I'm just, you girl's tired this week. I am tired this week, but I'm looking for some momentum tomorrow. Maybe my grandmother is going to come up. We are going to go eat lunch with my mom and I'm very excited for that. I don't get to see her that often. So I will take you guys to lunch with us to anything else that we might get up to because we always get up to something when she's around. So I'm sure that we will have something to do tomorrow. friends. I was really hoping that today would be a relatively chill day. I think I've already told you guys that I am going to be working through the weekend. I'm on call from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So basically any questions that the hospital has or that come through the call center, I am required to answer my phone and answer those calls. But I also physically have to go to the hospital, which is the really annoying part is I have to go in and round on all of the patients that we have in the hospital and take any, hello, excuse you, take any consults um, that may come our way throughout the weekend. So, hello, we have a guest star. Um, so it can range, it can vary for how long I'm there. It just basically however long it takes, it takes. And then sometimes I will have to go back in if we get like an urgent consult or something like that. All in all, it's usually not too, too bad, but it really just depends on the weekend. So I have made no plans for this weekend. I just kind of have to play it by ear. It is the closing of Ramathon, so I'm pretty sad that I don't think I'm gonna get to be there for closing sprints. If I am, it will probably be the latter, like tail end of them but it really just depends on what the hospital looks like and how everything's going. I don't really have much of a reading update for you guys. I have been listening to The Bone Season. I still have very similar feelings on it that I have been feeling. I just wanted to check in and say hello. It's Friday. I will probably not be reading tonight. Lexi is doing sprints and I was gonna join her, but honestly, I am tired and I think everyone is feeling they don't wanna look at a book this week and I just don't wanna look at a book today. I have been working all day. I was planning to just sit and chill, but instead I met my grandmother and my mom. We went to lunch. It was very good. We had some cheesecake. Then we went over to Target. I picked up a couple of shirts. They really didn't have a lot. And then I came home and I filmed two videos, edited a video and filmed part of another one. So I've just been busy and that's not exactly how I meant for today to go, but that's how today has gone. So I'm gonna be listening to Bone Season and hopefully just finishing it up over the course of the weekend. I don't know that I'll check in with you guys a whole lot tomorrow. It may be Sunday before you hear from me again. So 
it's gonna be five seconds for you, but for me, I will see you in a day or two. Good morning. Yes, I'm very, very tired, but I'm here. I'm making it. We are closing out Realmathon today. I cannot believe that it is the end of the month. I hate that I ended the month on kind of a more meh note just because it's been a long week and with the weekend and everything, I, I'm here. I'm making it. But I quickly wanted to tell you guys that I have finished the, whoops, there we go, <laughs> The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I think this one is going to get a four star from me. I enjoyed it. I think I liked it better than the first book but I do think it's going to be a very low four star. There's just certain things about the pacing that were not my favorite. While I love a prison setting this does in context of knowing what I know about the rest of the series feel very much so like a setup book. It does not feel like it has its own it feels almost too self-contained. Even though you're getting a ton of information for the rest of the series, I will say if you're not a huge fan of this first book, maybe continue on because the scope definitely broadens a lot. They go back out into the world and I think that The Mind Murder was not my favorite, but I do remember it kind of opening everything up a lot more in the politics. So anyway, I will leave you guys the points total down here. I'm sorry I have not been giving you guys the points total and what I'm using it for as I go. I'll be honest, I forgot for the first two books and for this one, it's six o'clock in the morning and I don't know where my phone is. Sorry for probably cutting past me off. I was going to tell you guys that it was too early and I didn't know where my phone was and we weren't going to calculate points, but then I decided no, no, I was going to get up and I was going to be good and I was going to share with you guys what I got points for. So for the bone season, this book was 560 pages. So I think that that's 20 extra points. I'll verify that. And then um, I'm not going to use this for a school setting. I was planning to and honestly, I probably could stretch it, but it just wasn't quite as much like training learning as I remembered it being in the first time I read it so I don't think I'm going to use it for school setting but it does have our cover item so that's 30 points total and it is a special edition I did pay for this book I think it's an even amount of letters if I'm mathing my math correctly it is new to my TBR this particular edition is I think that that's it so it's going to get us a total of 44 points, I believe, for Team Shadows. That is increasing points. And that is my final book for Realmathon. Oh, thank you guys so much for those of you that watched all of my videos this month. For those of you that were on Team Shadows, you are incredible, amazing. I don't know at the time of filming this video who won. So go Team Shadows, no matter who won, lost, whatever. You guys rocked it out this month. So thank you so much for spending the entire month with me. I appreciate you all. If you want to just let me know that you were here hanging out, leave me some kind of school emoji down below. But I would love to know about your experience with Realmathon. What was your favorite part? What was your favorite read? Tell me a little bit about Realmathon down in the comments below because I really, really want to know. I will leave a playlist of all of my Realmathon videos here if you guys missed any and you want to check them out. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are down in the description box below. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!